Hello, everyone. So today I'm going to be talking about the rejection wound. I have a previous episode on this, but I think that more than one episode is needed to really cover everything about the rejection wound. So to get started, this is really important for most autistic people to hear and understand, and for allistic meaning non-autistic, people to understand, to connect with us, and to better bridge the gap between the allistic and autistic model. So a lot of autistic people get trapped in a self-rejection wound. This happens at a very, very early age. Because when you're different from everyone else, it is very common to be excluded, bullied. I don't think I've ever met an autistic person that did not have some history of abuse or trauma involved, straight up. Maybe someone exists somewhere, but most autistic people go through a lot. We go through a lot, and it creates this layer of rejection that happens subconsciously. And this layer of rejection can then influence absolutely everything that we do. I'm sure somewhere there's also an autistic person that does not have a rejection wound. I'm not saying it's a guarantee, but I do see it in majority of cases. It's pretty rare to meet an autistic person that has not been rejected at some point or dealt with some sort of rejection wound. So I think that it's highly prevalent to talk about in this podcast. So it's a tricky thing, self-rejection. Have you ever walked into, like, have you ever been in elementary school and picked last? It doesn't feel good. It really doesn't. And it can be tricky to recognize that when things like that happen, that it's not anything personal. It can be really hard not to take things to heart when you're used to a lifetime of self-rejection. And I've been thinking a lot about this. Do you think that the world's would be so ignorant around autism if every, every autistic person stopped masking? If, if we all collectively decided to stop masking and started stimming and started being our best advocate and started making our needs clear, do you think that the world would change overnight? Because I do. I think that if we were brave enough to share the most vulnerable and expressive parts of ourselves with the world, I think people will respond kindly to that. Not only that, but that paves the way for new self-expression. So what I'm saying here is that a lot of these self-rejection wounds kind of become a self-fulfilling prophecy. I'll give you an example. Think about someone that you know, maybe in your life, who rejects themselves hardcore. Hardcore, like maybe they have some dopamine addiction like alcohol or cigarettes or social media or, you know, whatever it is. It's not exclusive. But, like, picture the the person that you can think of that rejects themselves the most. They probably don't eat healthy. They probably don't go to the gym. They carry with them a self-rejection that permeates every action that they take. They walk around with their head held in shame because they're afraid to be who they are and they think they're not worthy. They walk around thinking that everyone hates them, that no one wants to be with them. They walk around with a bunch of subconscious beliefs. Specifically, it is not safe to be me. It is not safe to be me. Think about that for a second. Can you imagine? That must be so painful for people to experience. If you feel like it's not safe to be you, Well, then that influences every single action you take. That influences everything you do. That influences every way that you interact. I literally met a guy who is currently trapped in the self-rejection wound. And he literally thought that every person that he met instantly hated him. Hated him. And I'm like, dude, look, I get it. I get that rejection is tough to deal with. But there's just no way that's even possible. Most people think about themselves 95% of the time. I guarantee you, like if you even have if you even have 5% of someone's attention or focus, that's a lot. Straight up. Like that's a lot. Most people are thinking about themselves, thinking about things they have to do, and they're focused on their own wounds, nothing else. So it's an illusion. 
You see how that's an illusion? And so it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because this guy, he walks around thinking people are going to hate him. Well, do you think that someone's going to want to talk to someone with their head held down in shame who appears to be guilty about everything they say and do? Do you think people like to talk to someone who apologizes for everything that they have ever done? No, not really. And more than that, it becomes a really big problem because people create these situations for themselves over and over and over. How do I know that? Because I was one of them. I spent 26 years trapped in a rejection wound of my own creation. 26. I'm 27 years old. Currently. That means I've been free for about one year. Maybe a little less than that. And it's wild. It is absolutely wild when you start thinking about it and analyzing how much of your life you have built in avoidance of pain. And I'm here to tell you that that is not the way out. So think about it for a second. If every person in the world decided to start being themselves without being afraid to express who they truly are, the world would be a different world. No question of that. And so what I'm suggesting is that these self-rejection wounds, A, are self-inflicted, and B, are responsible for a lot of the mess that we see because we're creating it. It's all you. Everything that's happening, everything that you're going through, it's all you. It's all you. Everything in your life experience is from your subconscious patterns on display. And if you can find a way to get to the root of those subconscious beliefs, if you can find a way to analyze yourself and recognize, wow, this subconscious belief has been ruling my life in this way. This other subconscious belief has been ruling my life in this way. If you can find and uproot uproot these negative subconscious beliefs, that's how you obtain your liberation. You're free. You don't have to worry anymore. Should I say this? No, you just say it because you know that you're going to say the right things at the right time, at the right place to the right people. You trust that. You walk with confidence. You know that you're worthy. You know that you're deserving. You know that it's safe to be you. There's no question to that. Of course it's safe to be you. You know that... No one's abandoning you. You know that no one's rejecting you. Because once you make the choice to stop rejecting who you are, once you make the choice to stop rejecting your very fabric of being, other people have no choice but to show up mirroring that choice that you've made. What I'm saying is you shift you and everyone and everything else shifts at a subconscious level. This is what I'm suggesting. So if you find yourself, if you're listening to this and you're like, okay, Kelsey, I hear you. I understand. Great. Now I'm aware that I am trapped in a rejection wound. First of all, fantastic awareness. Fantastic to be able to hear this message, to be able to not reject that it's you, and to be able to spot yourself in what everything I've just talked about. If, if this is you right now, go buy yourself a cake or something, like straight up, celebrate, because that is amazing. That is amazing awareness. Most people, if you tell them, hey, I notice you're dealing with a rejection wound, and I used to be there, and I really want to help you, they're going to run far away from you, because it's triggering. It's triggering to look at your own patterns. It's triggering to look at all the things that you've done to yourself that hurt you. It's very triggering to realize that. But the truth is that your best life lies right behind that. Are you willing to face you in your entirety in order to have a life of your own creation? Is your freedom worth the price of looking at yourself? Avoidance is not the answer. If avoidance was the answer then people who never look at their own problems would be the happiest people. But they aren't. It's the problems simmer and they simmer and they simmer and they simmer until eventually these people explode. Or worse, destroy their lives, destroy their relationships because they avoid their problems for so long that they can't cope. They can't take it anymore because they haven't actually looked at themselves. 
And I, I understand this is not easy to hear. I really do. I understand. I understand the temptation for you to hear this and be like, nope, that's definitely not me. That's definitely not me. I will tell you, I had that same reaction. I read an entire book about it. It's called Heal Your Wounds, Heal Your True Self by Lise Borbiu. Highly recommend it. It's one of the best books, I think, in existence. If you haven't read it, go get it, go buy it, or just email me and I'll send you a free PDF of it. It's so good. It's one of the best books I've ever read. It explains all the five wounds and everything. But the point is that when you carry with you feelings, intense feelings of self-rejection, you are abusing yourself. It is a form of egoic abuse. That's really what it is. You couldn't say, oh no, no, I couldn't be my own abuser. No, 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 no. That would reflect an unwillingness to take responsibility for what is your own creation. A lot of people are at that stage. And I realize it and I recognize it because it, it's what I went through too. It doesn't feel fun to look at your own pain. It doesn't feel fun to look at everything around you and be like, wow, like if I created this, then there's something really, really, really wrong. It's not a fun thing. It's not supposed to be a fun thing. It's supposed to be painful to motivate you to change, to motivate you to become aware of your subconscious patterns, to motivate you to become aware of your subconscious beliefs that are holding you back. It's supposed to be painful so you can become aware of your separation from everything and everyone in the universe. That separation is painful until you recognize and take total responsibility for every situation that you've ever experienced. And when you do this, when you take that responsibility, when you're ready to shift these experiences, words cannot describe the incredible ways that reality itself shifts around you. It is literally mind blowing. You'll think about something and it will materialize. It is as if all of reality suddenly shifts in your favor because you're no longer standing in your own way. So the next time after you've healed the self-rejection wound, you walk into a crowd of people and you feel comfortable. Of course you feel comfortable. You have no reason not to be. You're not rejecting anymore. You, you walk into the to the kitchen and you see whatever foods are tempting you, but you no longer feel like you need to eat to fill a void to have them. You no longer feel like there is even a void to be filled because you're giving yourself that self-love, that self-appreciation coming from the source within. You don't have to rely on other people and their opinions of how you live your life. You just flow with everything you're doing. You don't spend time and waste energy anymore worrying on things that don't matter. You don't, you don't get caught up in all of the drama, the ego drama that you used to before. Because you recognize, hey... That person's trapped in an abandonment wound. Hey, that person's trapped in a betrayal wound. Or hey, that person's trapped in a rejection wound. They're like me a couple years ago. You can look at every single situation in your life with so much compassion and love for absolutely everyone you encounter. If you get out of your own way. All of this self-rejection starts creating more and more situations where you're going to be self-rejected, where, where others are going to reject you. Someone who rejects themselves has no choice but running on autopilot to reject others. I once invited a, a person to a camping trip, someone that was really self-rejecting, hardcore. I could see it. I wanted to help them break out of the pattern. I was like, okay, if anyone can do it, then it's me, but I wasn't trying to fix them. You know, I wasn't trying to change anything about them. I was just kind of serving as a gentle reminder that they're worthy of everything, that their spirit within can lead them to absolutely everything that they want. And that this layer of self-rejection isn't necessary. 
What ended up happening on that camping trip, the person I came, came with, they spent the entire time getting high because they were addicted to weed. Now, I have nothing against weed, but if you find yourself, you know, consuming large amounts of it every single day and you're not able to enjoy a single moment without it, then there's something wrong. This person rejected every fabric of who they were. They rejected everything about themselves. And they continued to create more and more rejected patterns. Patterns that continued to create their experience. And I, honestly, it was a gift for me to witness this. It was a gift for me to witness this and to be aware of it. Because I realized, oh shit, that's me. That's me. That's me. Otherwise, this person and this pattern wouldn't keep showing up in my life. I must have a rejection wound. When I realized that, I was able to start exploring it with curiosity. I'm like, wow, this is so interesting. Like, wow, this really, really hurts. This hurts me a lot. It hurts a lot, but I'm not going to run from it. I'm going to see where this leads. I'm going to see what's behind this. I'm going to let myself feel all of my pain, all of my exclusion, all of my isolation. I'm going to let myself completely feel and process these feelings to their fullest extent without trying to run away from it. I'm going to let myself process the pain of being made fun of all throughout elementary school because I couldn't see the social hierarchy. I'm going to let myself process the pain of being bullied and people telling me to leave the seat on the bus to go to the back. I'm going to process all of this pain. Why? Because all of this pain I carried with me for 26 years in a self-rejection spiral that didn't need to be there. I always could have freed myself from it by recognizing that total oneness of everyone and everything. When you break out of your own patterns, you are rewriting your own code. You are literally rewriting your own code. You, it's like it's just like programming. It really is. You see the pattern, you spot it, you recognize it's not the pattern that you want. You take responsibility for the creation of that pattern instead of saying, nope, that's not my code. You listen and you look around you and do you receive that external feedback with grace because it's a reflection of the subconscious codes that you have programmed to run your life. When you're afraid of something, it brings it closer. Why do you think people who are so afraid of rejection get rejected? Because it's the same pattern. In a healthy relationship, people don't cling to each other. They don't say, I love you, I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you. That kind of clinging is what drives other people away. In a healthy relationship, you don't have someone who is denying every single one of their needs. What kind of relationship would that be? It wouldn't. It, it simply just wouldn't work. And it would be very confusing for the other person, too, to witness that and re be like, wait, why aren't you eating? Why aren't you, you know, drinking water? Why aren't you, why aren't you living, you know? And so I'm telling you this as a gift for you. A gift for you to gain awareness around your own patterns. A gift for you to realize that if you're self-rejecting, this is why other people in your life experience are showing up rejecting you. It is. It is literally a program. It's a script. It's all a script, I'm telling you. And when you start taking responsibility for these situations, and when you make the choice that your liberation matters more to you than the fears that hold you back, that's when you can finally start living life the way, the way that you want. Anything is possible to you. And your unwillingness to believe that is what holds it apart from you. Henry Ford was absolutely right when he said, if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. It's your mindset that either enables you to achieve the life of your dreams or holds you back. This is not a philosophical, motivational speech. Seriously, 
I don't want you to listen to this and think, okay, she's a philosopher. No, that's not the takeaway here. It's really not. Application is everything. So if you're caught in a self-rejection spiral and you can witness that within yourself and you can see, oh my gosh, that's my pattern, then this is a gift for you to be able to shift it. This is a gift for you to be able to make new choices. What, what were you doing when you were rejecting yourself? What were you doing? Now go out there and do the opposite. I'll give an example. When I was rejecting myself, sometimes I would work through lunch. I would work and, and kind of skip lunch. It was very bad. It did not help my alexithymia at all. And what ended up happening was I would skip or I, I would either skip lunch or work through lunch, not have a chance to really relax. And 3 p.m. rolls around and I'm in some meeting. I was so moody. I was so moody because I either hadn't eaten or I, I had already rushed through lunch without enjoying it. And I wasn't even able to focus for the rest of the day. That's one thing that I did when I was self-rejecting at my peak. And another thing that I did was that I would continue to burn myself out. I would think, okay, the subconscious belief program that was running was no matter how hard I try, it's not good enough. So I would try and I would try and I would try and I would try. I would push harder and harder and harder and harder and harder and harder. Not only did this pushing not get me to my desired result, it gave me burnout my last job, I burned out pretty hard. Honestly, it was not easy. And I'm sure a big part of that was the undiagnosed autism. But it was also my own choice to keep pushing myself instead of listening to my own needs. It was my own choice to stay at that job for as long as I did. It was my own choice to stay in a position that was not aligned for me. And there were a lot of times when I was trapped in that self-rejection that I projected it onto other people. And as difficult as it is, I forgive myself for it. I felt guilty about it for a while, but everything that you're experiencing is your subconscious patterns on display. And I realized that everything that happened to me was what made me aware, was what made me discover my worth of who I am, of what I deserve, of the importance of listening to my own needs, of the importance of being my own self-advocate, of the importance of stimming whenever I need it. Regardless of what people think about it, it does not matter. Societally, how are we going to shift into a new paradigm if we are continuing to restrict ourselves in our natural flow. You can't. The only way that what you desire for total autism awareness and bridging of the gap from autistic people to allistic people, the only way that bridge is going to happen is by making the choice to stop that self-rejection cycle. And you do it by loving yourself. You do it by knowing you're worthy. You do it by recognizing that total oneness, that everything and everyone around you is you. It's all you. You flowing with you. And all you have to do is make the choice to shift yourself. That's it. It's three, two, one. That's it. You shift you and everyone else shows up matching it. You make the choice that you deserve to get paid more and then you go out and you apply for jobs knowing that your next job is going to pay you more. Knowing, without a shadow of a doubt in your mind. You, when you are aligned with opportunities, opportunities present themselves. On the flip side, when you are aligned with fear, fear presents itself. So that's my question for you. Are you going to continue to live your life building a life centered around protecting yourself from perceived fears that are total illusions? Or are you going to pick the path of faith? Faith in who you are. Faith in your true power. Faith and total fucking confidence that you deserve better. Because deep down you know it, don't you? 
You know that you deserve better. You do. You know that you, you deserve a life where your needs are met. You know that you deserve a life where people are kind to you. You know you deserve a life without abuse. You know you deserve a life where anything you want is at your fingertips. And not through force, but through alignment. You know that you deserve a life where you don't have to live in fear. You know that you deserve a life where you get to be yourself. You get to free and liberate yourself from all of these fears. And so you're no longer self-rejecting anymore. And when that happens, everything in your entire life starts to shift. That is the true power that you have. The source within. Recognition of that is what frees you from any circumstance.